Antares is located in the constellation of Scorpius, approximately 550 light years away from Earth. Sometimes it's referred to as the heart of the Scorpion, or just Antares, which in ancient history was the name given to the star, simply meaning not Mars. Given that it shines in our night sky as a bright red dot, very similar to how we see Mars, back in the day those who discovered it after determining it wasn't Mars, decided to refer to the star as Antares, which when translated pretty much means anti-Aries or not Mars. Now if you've never heard of this star, which is 700 times the size of the sun, well I'll tell you everything you need to know and more. Today on Life's Biggest Questions we're asking what if our sun was Antares? Smash that like button and let's get into it folks. Now I can make this video incredibly simple and tell you right now if Antares replaced the sun, the entire Earth would be obliterated. Truth be told, it's so large that we can't even fully understand or comprehend the star's size. But we have a very strong belief it's about 700 times bigger than the Sun. And of course, as we know, in comparison to Earth, the Sun, well, it's massive. <laughs> so imagine the Sun multiplied by 700. Well, the edge of Antares would actually surpass Mars's orbit. So not only would it destroy Earth, but unfortunately, Elon would be a goner as well. Again, assuming he's living on Mars. And that's really that. If the Sun was Antares, the Earth and Mars would be completely obliterated as we'd be engulfed by the star itself. And I think it's implied that the planets currently closer to the Sun than Earth, and Venus and Mercury, would also be obliterated. But there really is so much more to it than that, isn't there? I mean, if the Big Bang happened and this is how things panned out, then Earth, Mars, humans in general would have never existed. So really, we wouldn't have known the difference because we wouldn't have ever existed in the first place. Getting very meta here, guys. Very meta. I've almost... What is life? It's a simulation. But I really want to talk about this star and how it really differentiates from the sun. In general, the entire solar system would be completely different, and to no surprise, a lot of the planets currently in the solar system likely wouldn't be. Whether it's due to said planets being engulfed by Antares or potentially colliding with another planet due to its new orbit, and then potentially bounces out somewhere else in space, one thing is certain. Everything we know about space would go out the window if this happened. Well, not everything, but our solar system in general would increase significantly. Given that Antares is 700 times bigger than the sun, certain planets would have more light than they currently do. Could this potentially lead to life on other planets? For all we know, if Antares was in the center of our solar system, maybe not humans, but another form of intelligent life could evolve. Assuming some sort of sunlight is all they've been missing all these years on those far out planets. And that in itself is an incredibly interesting thought, as there could potentially be numerous planets waiting to host intelligent life, but have yet to get the chance to evolve due to a lack of sunlight. It's wild when you think about it. More specifically, aside from the physical size, Antares also shines 10 to 11,000 times that of the sun. Which means even if you are living on a planet far away, we're talking far, far away, odds are it'd still be bright. Different galaxy? Probably not. Maybe though. That was a Star Wars joke for those that didn't get it. It also puts out about 60,000 times the amount of energy the sun does, but is much less dense, at less than a one millionth density when compared to the sun. Another surprising comparison is that this star, although very large, is much cooler than the sun. Like we're talking like, cool. Given that it's much larger, it seems the amount of heat is spread out more evenly, leading to the outer edges of Antares to be about 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit. In comparison, most stars, or at least the Sun, is usually around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there's more to it than just the Earth and a few planets are gone and some other planets get a little bit brighter. As per NASA, this star doesn't have any hydrogen left, or very little left, which means sooner than later, it's going to collapse on itself, with a mass 15 to 18 times that of the Sun, causing a huge supernova explosion. And you know what the supernova explosions could lead to? Black holes, baby. So as you can see, things are much, much more complex than just no Earth and some more light. If a black hole were to eventually form directly in the middle of the solar system, which again, would be different from the solar system we currently know, well, I can't even really tell you guys what would happen. All of space would inevitably be affected at some point, even if it simply means there's less planets orbiting in one of the many galaxies. Now with supernova explosions, black holes aren't always guaranteed. Sometimes they could just become tiny little neutron stars, but I mean, I like to go big or go home, so if we're talking, you know, we're making a video here about another star taking over for the sun and completely changing everything that we know about life and, and space and, and, and the universe, I mean, I'm also just going to say it turns into a black hole. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, that's it, that's how, we're, that's how we're running this one out. All in all guys, I think it's pretty safe to say that if our sun was Antares, well either something incredibly significant would have had to happen for the replacement to happen in the first place, in which before it fully happened, the earth would have been disintegrated anyways. If however, following the big bang, Antares was placed where the sun currently is, it's unclear how or which other planets would have been placed where, ultimately making a completely new solar system, which we would have no knowledge of. All in all, we know at some point this thing will likely go boom, but we're almost certain it won't affect us on earth. 
because of where it currently is. That being said, we'll be able to see it going down and it'll certainly be a sight to see. Until then, we gotta just keep making hypothetical videos like this one to keep us entertained. As always guys, love to hear your thoughts down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What if Lovecraftian Monsters were real part three marathon? TGA Martinez said, life biggest question, do we have free will? Uh, I'm simply, I'm gonna answer that question with another question. What is your definition of free will? And that is, that's how I'm gonna answer that one. Super Gamer said, do what if Canada was the next generation for Pokemon? So I'll be honest, I didn't really understand the comment. I, like, are you saying if Canada is where Pokemon started to evolve, like not evolve, I guess, but yeah, evolve or start to spawn? Or if Canada is where, like, we trained as Pokemon trainers. I don't really know. I like. I kind of just wanted a clarification there, but I'd like it because I live in Canada. Derek Seal said, "Quit scaring people." Well, Derek, um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. My intention isn't to necessarily scare, more so entertain. And entertainment can be found in many ways: humor, fear, laughter. You know, I don't know. Being scared, screaming, crying, everything. So I just try to entertain. I try to invoke emotion as an entertainer. So I'm not gonna quit scaring people because I just that's what I do for a job. Sorry. Anyways, guys, that's all for this one. Been your host, Jared Bronstein. We'll see you soon. Is it the Antares or just Antares? Like it's you call it the sun, you don't call it sun. Like I wouldn't start the video. Sun is located, you know what I mean? So is it the Antares? I don't know.